Hello, my name is Anya, and today we will create an option set and tie that to a dropdown to allow the user to sort a repeating group. Thing called a class, and it's got a date as a date field, a name as a text field, and then a price as a number field. I have some classes that I added directly into the database, and I set up a repeating group of type content class whose data source is a search for classes to just display the name, price, and date of each of the classes, which is what we see here. Now I want to have a drop down. And based on my selection here, this repeating group gets sorted. So if I were to choose lowest price, I want this ordered, I want the repeating group ordered from lowest price to the highest one all the way at the bottom. Now, one way we can do this is with static choices. But if this is something that we want to use throughout our application, it's not the best way to do it, especially given that we could potentially have a lot of sorting options. And this just means that every single time, even if we make it a reusable element, we'll have to set it up in a sort of inefficient way. So instead, I want to have dynamic options. I'm going to make the placeholder sort. And right now, we don't have a type of choice to really choose from, but we're going to set that up right now. For this, I want to use an option set. I'm going to call this sort options. These are the options from which a user can sort. So it can be lowest price highest price, closest start date, and then latest start date. Now I'm just going to go with these four. So right now we have the display set up, which is just the text that a user would see. When they're looking at the dropdown, these would be the options. But from a bubble's perspective, these words are meaningless. It doesn't tell them that they need to sort it by price. So we need to create a new attribute that will kind of be in bubbles language. This is going to be field. And it's just going to be a text. But this field is going to reference one of these fields on the class just by being date, for example. And then a bubble will be able to understand that, oh, this is talking about the price field on the class. And I'll show you how we will set that up. Additionally, we need a descending. Yes or no. When we look at our repeating group, we can see that we can choose something to sort by. This is a bubble speak, so we can sort by price. And then we need to choose if it's descending or not, if the highest price is at the top or if it's at the bottom. I'm just going to remove that. So we need to set that up as well. Now we can go ahead and modify each of these attributes. Lowest price is going to not be descending and the field it's referencing is just price. Highest price is descending, field it's referencing is price. At Closest start date is not descending and the field it's referencing is date. And then latest start date is descending and the field it's referencing is date as well. Now we can set this up. We want this drop down to display these sort options, options and it's just going to display all of them. And then we just want to show the current options display, which is what we want the user to see, not the bubble speak version. Now we can look at this and we see all of our options and that's exactly what we want. But when we select it, it doesn't really do anything for us because we haven't tied it to the repeating group. On the search for classes, we are going to look at this sort by. And we're going to choose to sort it by a dynamic field name which is going to be our drop down sorts values field. This is what we translated into bubble speak, price, date, and it will look at the class's 
price or date, whatever this value of the field is. The same thing for descending, we are going to get the drop down sorts values descending and this will end up being a true or false and it will work properly. I'm going to say ignore empty constraints. So if the value of the drop down is empty, it is just going to be ignored. It's not going to try to sort it by a null value. And right now we see it, it's all in this sort of random order. I can sort it by lowest price and we see 20, 20, 50, 60, 200, and then 3,000. I can sort it by highest price and we see that flip. You can sort it by closest start date. This is the earliest start date and this one is the latest. And then we can flip that around and that's what we see. We can also very easily add and modify my sorting fields 